Good morning. It is a blessing to be gathered as the people of God. It is wonderful to see all of you here today as we gather together to worship before the throne of our Creator. We are glad to see all of you as we come together. One day, two women who had been friends for years met for lunch. One of the women noticed that the front of her friend's car had some damage to it, and she asked what had happened, and the woman replied that her husband had been driving and had had a little bit of an accident, and then she said, you know, I'm really glad it was my husband who was driving, because if it had been me, it would have been because I was going too fast. If it had been our teenage son, it would have been because he was driving reckless, but because it was my husband, it was an unavoidable accident. I suppose every family has its own dynamics, but there are probably a few qualities that we could leave behind and we'd all be all right without them. This year, one of the things that we are doing as this congregation together, we are reading the devotional book called My Family. If if you don't have yours, there are copies still up here in the boxes to my right and to my left. And every weekday, what we're doing is we're reading a a very brief devotional centered on the home, centered on the family. And because we're doing that this year, we're going to have several sermons, about one a month, on the subject of the home, the family. And because of that, I want us today to look at something specific And that's what we find in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. There Paul was writing and he said, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. These qualities, the fruit of the Spirit, as Paul by inspiration calls them, are qualities for all Christians, no matter who we are. And they are qualities that we need in our life in every circumstance. Every day that we live, we need the fruit of the Spirit to be seen in us. And when we look at the home, it's easy to see how badly we need the fruit of the Spirit. And so with that in mind, what we're going to do today is we're going to begin looking at this, but, but I'm not going to go through all nine of these today. We're, we're going to just look at the first one as it applies in the home. We're going to begin to look at love in the home. And Lord willing, about every month, we'll we'll go through and look at another one of these qualities to see how they apply in the home. Now certainly, as we said, these are things that should be found in all of us as the Lord's people. They should be found in every relationship that we have, every encounter that we have. The fruit of the Spirit should be seen. How much more do we need to show the fruit of the Spirit in our home, in our family? And so with that in mind, let's begin looking at this in the first place, recognizing that our homes need the love that serves one another. I suppose most of us really like to be served we we like to have other people do for us we we like to have other people do the things that that we would like to do or like for them to do on our behalf it's it's a little bit of selfishness maybe that we have it all becomes about what I like what I want how I want things to be and it's something that we might find in different kinds of manipulation from guilt trips to gaslighting to criticism twisting facts around, baiting another person to get a certain reaction out of them, or or giving someone else the silent treatment. There are a lot of ways that we see this coming about, but it's all centered on money, possessions, power, having what I want. It's selfishness, and that is not what belongs in the life of the child of God. As we think about the home, one of the things that comes to my mind is what we read in Ephesians chapter 5. There we find Paul writing about Christ and his church. And and as he's writing about Jesus and his church, he he uses the husband-wife relationship as an illustration of it. 
And there he reminds us that, that the wife is to care enough about her husband to respect him, to make sure that she acts in such a way that he knows that she's proud of him. Men need that. That same passage tells the husband that he is to care enough for his wife that he cherishes her. And that he behaves in such a way, that he acts in such a way toward her, that she knows he loves her as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. We need love in the home. That's what we find over and over in the Bible. And so as we think about Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13, there Paul, writing to the Christians at Galatia, said, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Christian, in Christ, as one of his people, we are people who have liberty. We're free from the law of Moses. Our sin has been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have liberty. Let's use that liberty to serve. And certainly that is something that we should find in the home. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, we find another of those passages that, well, it's for all Christians at all times. But think about what a difference would be made in our homes if we put this to work. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, we read, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. The New King James Version reads. The English Standard Version here puts this in a way that is unmistakable. The English Standard Version in this passage says, Outdo one another in showing honor. Wouldn't that change our relationships? Wouldn't that change the way we speak to and talk to and act toward one another in the home? Outdo one another in showing honor for the other. It's, it's about doing dishes or washing clothes or cleaning the floor even if you didn't make the mess. It's about letting somebody else have their way and instead of us pushing for our own way all the time. It's about thoughtfulness and concern and respect and mercy and attentiveness. It's about living like Jesus. That's what we're talking about. We want to have love in the home and the love that we need in the home is the love that serves one another. But as we read through the New Testament, we find in the second place, that our homes also need the love that respects our church family. When we have love in our heart and in our home, it's going to affect the way we talk about our brothers and sisters in Christ, our church family. There have been too many families through the years where Children were raised up, growing up, and, and what they heard was a lot of kind of an us versus them mentality. It, it's my family, my close group versus them, versus that, that group there at the church building, that group there that we call our church family, us versus them. And, and discussions will very often revolve around perceived shortcomings of one member or another. Whether or not it's actually a shortcoming is irrelevant. It, it's that this is the constant diet that is found in those families when that happens. Our homes are twisted into something they were never meant to be. Read with me what we find in Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. These verses are words that you and I need in our mind. Colossians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, Paul wrote, For I want you to know what great conflict I have for you and for those in Laodicea and for all of those who have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit, together in love and attaining to all the riches and full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God both of the Father and of Christ. Now think about what Paul wrote here. I want you to know what great conflict I have for you. 
The word for conflict there means, well, just that. It's a fight, a struggle. The word that was used in the original language is the word from which we get our word agony. The word is agon. I want you to know the struggle that I have. For whom? He says, for my brethren, that, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together. That word knit means to, to join together, to bring together. I want your hearts knit together in love so that you can come to know God. Think about what Paul's saying. Christians, let's knit our hearts together. Let's bind our hearts together. That song maybe we've sung from time to time. Bind us together, Lord. Bind our hearts together so that we can know Him better. John chapter 13 and verse 35, Jesus said that we should love as He loved us. He says, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul wrote that he wanted the brethren to have a love that would abound more and more. The word abound has to do with increasing, growing stronger, becoming more and more. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 17, Peter simply told his brethren, love the brotherhood. How wonderful would it be if our homes were havens where the brethren our brothers and sisters in Christ, where their names were always safe on our lips, where our children could grow up knowing full well our love for one another, that our hearts are knit together in love. It will make an eternal difference to our children. It will make an incredible difference just to how they see the church family. Because the church is the body of Jesus. your wife, ladies, your husband, your children, that they need to hear the best. They need to hear things about the church family. They need to hear things about brothers and sisters in Christ that will encourage them, that will strengthen them, that will help them to have that greater love for one another as the people of God because our hearts really are knit together. Our homes need the love that respects the church family. But then number three, I want us to notice today that our homes need the love that follows Jesus. Remember, our our home is to be the place where where the children are raised to walk in Christ, where, where our spouse is encouraged. Our love should focus first and foremost on the spiritual. Your wife. Ladies, your husband, your children, young people, your parents. They need to hear about Jesus from you. They need to see him in you. They need to learn from you how to come to him, how to walk in him, how to hold tightly to him when times are difficult. Think about what we read in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1. There Paul writing to his brethren said to them, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. By the way, that's what next Sunday is about. That's what our elders are doing in in that statement that they're going to be reading. They want to help us to stand fast in the Lord because we are beloved brethren to them. We are the flock and and that's what we all should want for one another. Shouldn't our families be part of that? Paul used the word beloved. It's a word that refers to those who are dear and cherished to us. He says, beloved, I want you to stand fast. It's a word that means to stand firm to be steadfast. Stand fast where? In the Lord. Isn't that where we all need to be? In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, Paul writing said, In Him, in Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. In Him, we have this forgiveness. We can back up four verses to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, and there we read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Think about that. Salvation is in Christ. Every spiritual blessing is in Christ. And so we need homes that will make Christ the focal point. Not a focal point. Not, not one aim of, of several for our home, but that Christ is the one focal point. And everything else that we do funnels in that direction. That He is the aim for every one of us. We need homes where we, we all know that we're going to be present for Bible class and worship. It's, it's not a chore for us, but it's a blessing we need homes where we're going to be involved in, in the activities and, and the work of the church and, and that we make time for it. That time doesn't just somehow appear in our schedule. We have to adjust our schedule for those opportunities to spend time with brothers and sisters in Christ. We need times in our home when we're talking about Jesus and our love for Him. Maybe in, in devotionals that we have with the children. Maybe it's, it's in discussion that we have through the course of a day. But we remind them of our Lord Jesus Christ in our homes. We need to show the kindness and consideration and the love of Jesus in our homes. We need to encourage one another to follow Jesus. To serve Him seriously. And not simply as a pastime a couple of days a week. In our homes we need the love that follows Jesus. In those words with which we began the sermon, those words that are going to guide us each time as we, we revisit this topic through the course of this year, we read Galatians 5 beginning with verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. These qualities are needed in our lives. They're needed in our workplace. They're needed when we go to the store. They're, they're needed when we're just outside talking to a neighbor. We need to have the fruit of the Spirit showing in us. We need to bear the fruit of the Spirit in the way that we live every day and certainly in our home. We need to bear the fruit of the Spirit to make sure that our family sees these qualities in us and today we've looked at the first of these love and and how we need to see love in the home we need to see the love that serves one another we need to see the, the love that respects our church family we need to see the love that follows Jesus if you're a husband or a wife if you are a parent or a child if you're a grandparent an aunt an uncle whoever you are in the family your family will be made better when you start with the love of Jesus. When you start with what we see here as the fruit of the Spirit, it begins with love. And so won't you come to Jesus now to begin your life in Him so that you can bring that love of Christ into your home and to every relationship that you have? It's our sin that separates us from God. Our sin has pushed us away from Him. And He in His goodness, in His mercy, in His grace, gave His Son Jesus the Christ, that Jesus went to the cross. He shed His blood for me and for you. Does that tell us something about how terrible sin is? And He went to the cross and He shed His blood so that by His blood, you and I can be saved. Won't you come to Him? Hearing the word of God, believe. Repent of your sin. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And be buried with Jesus in baptism for the remission of your sins. And when you do that, your sins are washed away by that blood of Jesus. You've become a Christian. Then be faithful. Following Jesus with the love of Jesus guiding your life and guiding your home come to the Lord. If you as a Christian haven't been faithful, if there's something in your life that is not what it should be, come home to Him right now as we stand and as we sing. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ. 